We have some commentary from Kathy Wood on Tesla's end of the year production numbers. If Tesla is actually going to beat, as you guys know, a beat is what sends stocks up historically. And Dan Ives as well. He expects stocks could rally another 10 to 20 percent by the end of this year that this pullback that we have seen recently is simply a buying opportunity i think these experts need to be at least heard out at the very least even if you do not agree we're going to be going over as well i don't want to be too bullish here in this video some of the negatives that are currently out at play in the markets and give you a realistic overview on what could happen over the next couple of months with Tesla stock as well as the broader markets. So let's start this video off with a note from Morgan Stanley. They say in both 1989 and 1995, yield curves were normal or positive sloping, especially the bellwether three month and 10 year curve. This means that three month treasury yields were lower than 10 year treasury yields, signaling that markets had a, had a positive long term outlook and expected the economy to pick up. Today, the curve sits at around its most deeply inverted levels on record with a three month yield higher than the 10 year yield by about 180 basis points. Inverted yield curves imply that investors are expecting growth to slow, causing the Fed to reduce rates meaningfully in the future. This is a problem. If we take a look at where this yield curve is today, you'll see it's only inverted 1.38%. Now let's back this chart up to other times in history. Let's take this back to 1995. Every time you've seen this spread go inverted under this black line, you have seen a recession. Literally every single time. Even during 2019 in August, you've seen this inverted by a half percent. And you had the COVID recession, what, like eight months later? How did investors know that was going to happen? I don't know. The bond market is larger than the stock market by about five to 10 times, uh, depending on any period of, of time. So the bond market is usually correct rather than the markets that trade off of more or less fear and greed. So we've seen this massive inversion recently. Now, you were actually positive for a lot of 2022 when the markets were selling off. This was great. I mean, you were you were positive 2% on this yield curve inversion during April of 2022. Well, it started to invert, and it's really inverted recently. Well, the pain in the markets and before a recession is typically the uninversion. That's the part where you really want to watch. And it has started to uninvert. That means this chart has started to go higher again. And that's where the pain ultimately starts. And then a recession usually precedes that within the next 3 to 12, 12 months. Kathy Woods, in one of her latest interviews on Bloomberg TV, is also expecting to some degree a recession and a reset for the auto markets, but she believes EVs and specifically Tesla will not feel the same pain as your legacy automakers. I find this pretty interesting. Uh, well, we loved Zach and love Zach and, and think he will do very well uh, wherever he goes. I, I, uh, I know there are rumors out that there are some CEO positions out there, which um, uh, he might like to take. So. Um, we will miss him, uh, but his successor has been with Tesla right underneath him uh, since 2018. So he was put through the fires. Remember in 2018-19, many, uh, many analysts were saying, uh, that Tesla was going bankrupt. And so he's been there, he's gone through the fire and, uh, you know, it's a tough job. It's a tough, tough job. So I, uh, I guess 13 years was uh, a really good run for Zach and can't say enough good things about him and what he did for Tesla. Do but you, I think he trained his successor well. That's uh, great to hear. Do you, um, expect Tesla to build 2 million vehicles this year. I think it's incredible how they've grown production and it looks like they can do that. Um, what are your expectations for their growth from here on out? Well, as you know, we have a five-year investment time horizon and 
And we do think the cycle for autos is going to get tougher in here generally. Uh, but we think just like last year when electric vehicles were up 69% or 65%, something like that, and gas-powered vehicles down 7% globally, we think we're going to continue to see that share shift accelerate because uh, electric vehicle prices are going to follow the co their costs down in a way that gas-powered cars cannot. So we think that electric vehicles will be less expensive, and they are better cars than uh, gas-powered vehicles. Uh, so we think they're going to take tremendous share. And uh, even if the auto market uh, relapses in here, which we think it could, uh, we don't think electric vehicles will, will relapse. So we think the 1.8 million for this year, which was Elon said 1.8 to 2 million, they're going to have some shutdowns in the third quarter for maintenance and upgrades. Uh, and so he lowered uh, he lowered his expectation to the lower end of that range. Mm. I think he likes to lower expectations and then beat. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's higher than that. Um, uh, BNF, Bloomberg New Econ Econ Economy Forum, has voiced concerns about the availability of um, you know, cobalt and lithium. And is there enough to continue making electric cars for the masses as some producers like GM are building, you know, massive 200 kilowatt batteries for their trucks? Is that a concern for you at all? Do you think Tesla has the uh, production locked in? Well, I know very early on they, they said to their suppliers, you know, if if you will build it, we will buy it. So, yes, they've been in a preferred position and probably still are. Uh, they're also very smart. Tesla's engineers are very smart. They are engineering cobalt out of the cars. Uh, they're doing it for a few reasons. The supply is uncertain and it's very focused in, um, I guess, the Congo, uh, where there are a lot of uh, environmental and governance and social concerns. So they're engineering it out uh, and they're moving into uh, and you should say uh, on lithium uh, actually if you look at the price it went up tenfold in two years and now it's down uh, about 40 percent from that peak i think uh, lithium is one of the most pervasive uh, minerals out there so uh, we don't think uh, lithium is an issue at all especially now that uh, the Chinese and the uh, Koreans and all of the U.S. OEMs uh, are are basically telling lithium miners just uh, just build it and and we will take it. Uh, so and then the other interesting thing is again this is Tesla leading the charge so to speak in this category um, lithium iron phosphate. So. Uh, uh, taking out the nickel and other metals that may end up in short supply, especially if we get into very strong cycles. And uh, the uh, lithium ion iron phosphate is a much lower priced or will lead to a much lower priced car as well. We are also seeing some horrendous data coming out of China. As I've reported many times, the exports are down 14.5% in July and imports are down 12.4%. This sequential decline that you're seeing is a very clear sign China is heading for a recession. Europe is already in a recession. China is actually seeing deflation, which is worse than inflation for an economy. So this does not look like a U.S. isolated event. If anything, the U.S. might do better than the kind of globe as far as a potential downturn. And I think heading into 2024, an election year, you don't really want to have the headlines saying a recession. So I think the government, I think political bodies will do whatever they can do to keep us out of a recession and to have a good 2024. That makes sense to me, but hey, we'll see what happens. The markets are currently not expecting the Fed to cut rates for another seven months or so. And as far as the three month and 10 year steepening of the inverted yield curve, that would suggest rate cuts are probably coming a lot sooner than seven months from now. The markets are expecting the first rate cut in March of 2020. You're expecting another rate cut in uh, May, and then you're expecting a paw another rate cut in uh, June. You're expecting a 
another rate cut. Jeez, another rate cut in July. September, you're actually expecting a pause. And November, you're expecting another rate cut to end the year at about 4.25 to 4.5% for the Fed funds rate. So you're expecting over 1.5% of cuts for next year. That's what the markets are currently projecting. And if things get worse for the economy, we're going to see more cuts. But I think Tesla specifically could be a bright spot on any potential slowdown because the tax credits that are applicable at the dealership to lower the price that you're going to pay for EVs, that's a huge incentive. Tesla releasing the Highland as well as the Cybertruck, that's also going to be a very big deal. But when the Fed does cut rates, it drives down borrowing cost, which should allow more people to get into Teslas, especially considering prices have fallen for Teslas in 2023. They're historically the cheapest they have ever been. And they're the best bang for your buck that you can buy out there in the markets today. There's 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 no better vehicle for $40,000 that you can buy than a base Model 3. Maybe you could make the argument that there is, but technology-wise, what you're getting, there's a lot of bang for your buck in a Tesla. So as Kathy Woods also expects, Tesla could do just fine. And EV vehicles could do just fine. And I am in that same alignment. Now, they don't even have to do that great. Let's be honest with ourselves. I've said it before and I'll say it again for redundancy's sake. But the markets are currently expecting 27% delivery growth for Tesla next year. They're expecting 29% EPS growth next year for Tesla. That means that would be the worst growth that you have seen in the last 10 years, ever since Tesla became a publicly listed company. I'm not willing to make that bet. I think even in a bad scenario, even in a hard landing scenario, Tesla could still grow deliveries more than 27%, especially because the Cybertruck is launching, and that's going to have a halo effect for Tesla's brand. And I don't think EPS is going to come in at 29% growth, although it could if Tesla aggressively invests back in their business. And what we've actually seen recently, some very encouraging signs that maybe we're going to get another plant being signed or agreed upon for India, as well as potentially Indonesia, as well as Mexico that's currently underway. We've broke ground on construction. Giga Texas being expanded. Giga Berlin being expanded. These things are all happening. That all kind of eats away at your EPS number. But I still think 29% probably too low, even considered considering the expansion that Tesla plans to do next year. I think it's also important to keep in mind the markets and the economy are not the same thing, okay? The economy can do fine and the markets can do poorly. The markets can do great and the economy can do poorly. They're not the same creature. Now, I am not doom and gloom for next year. I think there will be a slowdown. To some degree, there might be a shallow recession. I'm not in the camp that this is a depression, that's for sure. And I'm not in the camp that we need to see some epic crash in the markets. Sure, valuations are high for some of your big tech names, right? Your Apples, your Microsofts, um, your NVIDIAs even. Some of those stocks, pretty high valuations. And they control the broader market weighting of the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. So if you see those stocks come down, call it 20% or so, that would push the indexes down. But really under the surface, if you look at something like a Tesla that's trading two to three times cheaper than Microsoft or Apple, it's not expensive. If you look at the average stock in the S&P 500, it's trading at a 16 times multiple. That's not expensive. Look at your small and mid-cap stocks. They've gotten beaten down within the last 18 months and are not even close to recovery. So I really think 2024 is going to be a stock picker's year more than it's just going to be categorized as a massive crash and you know the economy going down the toilets that could happen but i think this is more or less a stock picker's market and i think tesla has some of the greatest chances to do well in 2024 given the new products being launched and the tax credits that will be applicable to the dealership just so everyone is aware 
your $40,000 Model Y, well, you could take $7,500 off the top from the government starting on January 1st. That lowers your monthly payment that you're going to have to pay for financing your vehicle, as well as interest rates falling. That's also going to make Tesla's a lot more affordable. And is, as Elon said on the last earnings call, the, the markets, as it becomes more affordable to finance a vehicle, Tesla won't have to cut prices nearly as much, if not at all. Now, Dan Ives has been very correct on calling this market rally so far, and he expects this rally will continue and even get larger by the end of this year. Now, I agree with a lot of what he says, definitely not everything. I think the biggest hurdle for the economy is student loan repayments. That comes on October 1st. If the economy can get through that, Without a recession and consumers can bear that brunt of around 10 to 15 billion dollars of discretionary spending being sucked out of the economy, then things will be fine and we will be okay. The economy will likely not enter into recession, right? People will continue to spend and spend their way through a slowdown. If the student loans force people to cut back, even if it's restaurants, even if it's shopping right or or clothing apparel doesn't matter what it is all of that has a trickle down effect people stop going to restaurants waitresses stop making money cooks have to get laid off they no longer can buy things the waitresses can no longer buy things the business owner can no longer invest in the business as much as they did in the past these things do have trickle down effects and that's important to keep in mind and that could be a big story of 2024 but if the student loan repayments don't cause a recession, then I really don't know what will. But the tech rally, we had a huge rally, right, most of the year, losing a little bit of steam over the last week or so. Datadog, Supermicro, NVIDIA, they're all among this week's worst performers. Even Apple has been dropping lately. But your next guest expects any pullback like this one to be short-lived, and he is reiterating his bullish call for a much as 15% gain for tech just macro tech, I guess, for the end of the year. Let's bring in Wedbush's Dan Ives. Dan, is that a macro tech call? Not really. I mean, to us, what we're seeing from enterprise spend, I think in terms of where we see guidance, and I think the AI revolution, the fourth industrial revolution, is now taking hold. And we believe this is just halftime of a new tech bull market underway. Who's going to drive it? Because stocks go up when there's more buyers than sellers. So I think big tech ultimately is driving. I mean, if I look from a cloud perspective, we, we've seen upticks from this earnings season, from Microsoft, of course, to Amazon with the flex, the muscles, quarter, Google. And what we see going to the second half, I mean, we believe ultimately spending could increase four or 500 bips on the cloud. And that ultimately is going to be driven from what we're seeing on AI, and that's going to drive cybersecurity. It's going to drive broader enterprise. And I think many investors here are not positioned well, where we believe going in 2024, we see tech stocks up another 20% from these levels. Well, I don't know if you heard Stephanie Link a few minutes ago, Dan. If, if you did, I'll just reiterate what she said for the viewers that maybe you didn't either. It's Fortinet, right? FTNT, a cybersecurity company, got crushed. It fell like 20%. Last week, if cybersecurity Palantir, I know a name that you cover and, and, and like, if this is the future and we know how what a threat cyber is, why are an investor, why are they selling at the drop of a hat with a number that slightly misses? Because I think right now there's nervousness, right? In terms, not just in terms of Fed backdrop, but in terms of maybe how some of these names have run and you're not yet seeing that parabolic growth. But ultimately, when I look at Fortinet, that's a table pound. I look at Palantir, another tail pounder. Microsoft continues to be our top pick. And I think the best tech name out there is Apple, where I think we sit here a year from now, we're looking at a three and a half trillion dollar mark cap. iPhone 15, we think it's gonna be a mini super cycle. And I think that right now is just the sentiment, glass half, you know, when I say glass half empty relative to tech, but I just believe this is just get out the popcorn moment to what I view as a massive second half rally for tech stocks. And you still love a Rivian, R-I-V-N, the electric truck and SUV maker. I mean, look, to me, they are a core EV player. I mean, you've talked about a 
you know, a bunch. And when I look at what Tesla is doing, you look at what Rivian, there's going to be many winners. And I think what Rivian's now finally turned the corner from a supply chain, demand looks strong. And, and this green tidal wave is playing out. And that's why I just continue to take a step back here. It's a 1995 moment, not a 1999, 2000 moment. Internet, 1995, I think it's the biggest transformational tech trend we've seen in 30 years which is why I view this as a bright green light to own tech, despite many yelling fire in a crowd theater. It does feel, listen, it does feel like artificial intelligence, AI, is maybe the, or could be the biggest transformational thing, maybe perhaps, and tell me if this is hyperbole, since basically the creation of, say, the World Wide Web. I mean, as a way that we, we change mm-hmm the way we worked, right? You had the internet, of course, you know, dial-up modems, things like that. The web comes out, AOL makes it accessible, Netscape. It feels like a Netscape kind of moment in a way, if that makes any sense. It, it, Brian, I mean, it, it, it is. And, and I think that's why it's a 1995 moment, not 1999, 2000. We're talking about incrementally a trillion dollars of incremental spend next decade. That's why when I look at a quarter knee-jerk reactions of some of these quarters in tech, I view that as just table stakes relative to where I see these names going over the next 12, 18, 24 months. And that's why we're handholding our clients through this, because I view this as more of an opportunity, not the time to hit the elevator. So in the short term, it looks like we could see some pressure on the markets as well as some pressure on Tesla stock because Tesla is going to follow the markets and amplify whatever the markets do. But if you look at this chart, the markets have rallied far too aggressively. We never should have really rallied to this extent. Sure, inflation is coming down, but it's not like like growth's going to do very well. And the stocks that have actually done well are the stocks that should not do well during a low growth environment. During a low growth environment, stocks that offer you growth do very well. That's why during the past 10 years or so when we've had low growth environments, high growth stocks have done well. Usually when the economy is not in a recession but not growing super fast, your mega growth stocks do well. Like a Tesla growing at 40 or 50% next year as I expect, EPS and volume growth should be highly attractive to growth investors. Because the economy, even if it avoids a recession, is not going to be growing. A lot of stocks in your portfolios have been selling off your small and mid-cap stocks because they're high growth, high potential loss probability, right? And that's because interest rates have been climbing. When interest rates start to fall and if the economy stays out of a recession, growth stocks will outperform. Now, Microsoft, Apple, they're not growth stocks. They're not growing. Apple is in a technical recession, if you were to categorize a stock in a recession or not. Microsoft, not growing. They're expecting 10% growth for the next 10 years. That's not what you would look for in a growth stock in a low growth economy. Tesla, on the other hand, offers you growth. So I think this really will be a stock picker's market in 2024. And I think Tesla is in terms of safety, in terms of innovation, in terms of future growth prospects and current growth prospects, is probably the most attractive large cap stock to buy for 2024. Hands down. There's a lot of great small and mid cap stocks as well that are heavy growth that have been gotten beaten down. But if you want a little bit more safety, believe that or not, Tesla is where you want to be. Now, obviously, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial planner. I don't have a crystal ball. We could go into a depression next year. This video could be really, really wrong, or things could be fine, and it might look like I have a crystal ball. But long story short, this is my opinion. This is some of the bull and bear argument. I just want to be the voice of reason for all of you. And again, my bottom line is, if the student loan repayments do not cause a recession, then I don't know what else will. 13% to 15% of Americans have student loan debt. The average student loan payment is around $250 a month. 60% of America lives paycheck to paycheck. 50% of Americans don't have $400 in the bank to cover an emergency bill or emergency cost. If this monthly payment that kicks in does not cause a recession... 
this about 80 billion dollars of liquidity of money that will be sucked out of the economy every year does not cause a recession i just don't see it so student loan interest starts on september 1st just uh 16 17 days from now and then your student loan payments start on october 1st there is a program known as save i believe it's operational right now you can apply to it if you make less than 15 dollars an hour you will not need to pay back your student loan payments until you breach 15 dollars an hour or if you um if if you wanted to opt to to only have to spend five percent of your discretionary income towards a payment instead of 10 percent, that is also an option if you have student loans that might be something worth looking into but that is going to do it for this video hit that like button subscribe to the channel and source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section you guys have a great rest of your day and i will see you in the next one